Well, hey guys, and welcome to the special Oscar Day presentation by us here at Collider Video. This is our pre-Oscar and prediction show for what is, other than Christmas, my favorite day of the year. And other than my family, I'm with my favorite people of the year. Aww. First of all, sitting way over there, of course, Mr. Dennis Zen. Hey guys, I'm happy to be here with you guys so we can talk movies, 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 all the best movies of 2016. And right beside me, Perry Nemiroff. I would say this is one of my favorite days of the year as well. Right up there with Halloween, Oscars and Halloween. It's a perfect pairing. And, of course, Mark Riley's joining us today for the Oscars. Hey, very happy to be here. Christmas, Halloween, Oscars. So I'm, I'm right in there with you guys, <laughs> and I'm ready to win this Oscar pool as well. Now, some of the production guys were pointing out, let's go to the wide shot if, if we have one for a second. But apparently, Mark Riley, in just a short little while, you're going to be running over to the uh, Hollywood Highland Center there to host Correct. the Oscars, apparently. Correct. Yeah, the, the limo's waiting, so let's uh, get this going, guys, because I have a big show to host <laughs> later. All right, guys, so here is how our day is going to unfold. We are starting our Oscar day with our pre-show here, but this is not the only thing we're doing today. So for those of you who are watching us live right now and you're in the chat board and there's already more of you than I thought there would be in the live chat, uh, let others know when others come along and ask. But here's what's going on for the rest of the day. So we're going to be doing this pre-show from 3 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, that's right now, until 4 p.m. And then when the Oscars begin, which is at what time? 5.30, around 5.30. 5.30 Pacific Standard Time, we are going to be starting a live stream throughout the entire Oscars. Now, we're not going to be on camera for the entire Oscars. What's going to happen is we're going to have a live stream going so you can keep it open on your uh, web browser there. And then during each commercial break, a bunch of us are going to run in here on the camera, talk about what just happened in the previous segment, and we're going to do that throughout the night. And then, of course, after the Oscars are done, we will do a live post-game wrap-up, uh, talking about the surprises, the expected stuff, the snubs, perhaps. It's going to be a fun day, and uh, pretty much almost the entire Collider crew is going to be here throughout the day. And we want to thank you for joining us. Now, this one is the pre-show. And we're going to look at a number of the categories. We're not going to get to all of them because we only have like uh, 55 minutes left now. We're going to touch on some of the key ones, but don't worry. We'll probably talk about the rest of them in the post show. We're going to go over a bunch of the categories here, talk about what's nominated, what we expect, who we think is going to win, and then who we think we should win as well. And we're going to start this thing off in the category of Best Original Screenplay. And the nominees for Best Original Screenplay are Hell or High Water, La La Land, the Lobster, Manchester by the Sea, and 20th Century Women. Dennis, let's start with you. What do you think will win, and then what do you think should win? I think La La Land is going to win. I think Hell or High Water should win. Uh, I think that script is excellent. It's a tight. The dialogue in it is absolutely fantastic. But Hell or High Water was not seen as much as, as La La Land was. Perry, what about you? This one's an interesting one just because we had that whole thing where both Loving and Moonlight were booted from this category and put into the Adapted, whereas that was not the case in the WGA. Right. Had Moonlight been in this category, I don't think anything would have had a chance against it, but Moonlight, I think, was based on an unproduced play, yeah. I believe, which, mm -hmm. I, you know, whoever makes the rules, whatever, it's up to you. Without Moonlight in this mix, I think it's coming down to Manchester by the Sea and La La Land. Obviously, I want La La Land to win everything, but I think in my pool, I'm betting Manchester. I just, I suspect that maybe folks will think, oh, La La Land's going to win everything, and Manchester is still a really great script that could deserve the, the award, so this could be the time when Manchester gets the award. And I say that because my prediction in another category might surprise some people. Mm. I'm, I'm going to go for Dark Horse here. I think Will and Should are both going to be hell or high water. Mm. Uh, I, now, and I know that's going to come. Nothing that has happened up till this point in the award season indicates that whatsoever. But, I mean, I adored La La Land. But, and I think one of the best things about La La Land was not necessarily the script. This, uh, the direction, the yes. magic of it, all that kind of stuff, but it wasn't necessarily the script. That Hell or High Water script to me was just insane. The entire movie to me was built on that script. So I'm definitely going should win, and I'm going to take the outside chance. I'm going to say it's going to take the trophy. I'm going to pick it as a will. So there goes my bracket right away. My bracket's <laughs> yeah. done yeah. right off the bat. Anyway, Mark, what about you? I love that. I wish and I hope that Hell or High Water would win this. It should. It's my favorite, too. Uh, that is a fantastic movie. I'm going, I think you're right, Perry. I think Manchester by the Sea is the one that might take this because La La Land's going to take so many others. 
I don't want La La Land to win. I don't think it's a remarkable script. I think out of all of them, Hell or High Water is just the best. It pops the most. But Manchester by the Sea, it's a great script. I think that could be looked at as the 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 one that's going to win. That's my prediction. Well, now, before we move on to original screenplay here, we, we'd be remiss if we didn't mention that. Look, the big monster in the room at the Oscars this year is La La Land. 14 yep. nominations. Is, is that a record? Might be a record. Mm -hmm. If not, it's close. It ties the record, It I ties believe. the record for mm -hmm. most nominations. Okay, so now, the record for most wins at the Oscar, uh, no film has ever won more than 11. And that 11 is shared with three films. It is Lord of the Rings Return of the King. It is, I believe, Titanic. And I believe it is the uh, the original as opposed to the most recent, Ben-Hur. No, not not the recent no, one. No, it came close. Yeah, yeah. It came close. <laughs> Just shy. I think it just missed it by 11. Um, so... <laughs> So, Very close. Now, so we got a film with 14 nominations. So before we get into original screenplay, Mark, just quickly, can La La Land, do you think La La Land has a shot of actually either tying or breaking that most Oscars record? I think it definitely could tie. I don't think it'll break. Um, there seems to be a little bit of a pushback yeah. against La La Land lately, so maybe they're going to distribute some different awards around the horn to get get some other people uh, involved, some other well-done movies involved. But I think if we start to see some of the smaller categories going to La La Land, then it could start to really snowball in its favor, and it will tie it. It could tie it. I could see it happening. I don't see it breaking, though. I couldn't see it breaking the record. Here's the funny thing. I actually believe La La Land is going to win a lot of the big ones, yeah. but I think a lot of the other categories, it's a matter of, they're just happy to be nominated. I think there's a number of categories here where it's like, I think La La Land has just got lucky to get nominated in this category and this category and this category and this category. I see La La Land doing very well, probably winning more Oscars than any other film this year, but I see it coming in at seven or eight. I don't see it get breaking double digits at this point, but well, the which ones it will win, we'll get into as we cover the other categories. But what about you, Perry? Do you think it has a shot at breaking that record or tying that record? Definitely not breaking it. I wouldn't bet on that, even though, you know, I, I clearly like the movie. And I just would like to see, you know, another huge accomplishment like that to happen, because that'd be a really exciting mm. ceremony. But at the same time, I think, if anything, it has a chance of tying it. If my pool predictions pan out, I have it down to win 10 things, which mm. that sounds like a reasonable number to me. I actually think in some of the, you know, not the not the hot topic categories, but, you know, production design, costume design, things like that. I, I do think it's going to win a good deal of them. And for all I know, my prediction with screenplay is going to be wrong, too. And I think it does have a solid shot of taking that as well. And if I'm wrong in that category, that would put it as a tie. Dennis, does it tie or break the record? Or neither? If I had a... Pick, I'd say neither. I'd say it might get close to tying. I don't think it's going to break it. I think uh, with with both of what uh, you and Riley were saying, there is a backlash like, against uh, La La Land right now. And then also, I don't see it winning in those smaller guys. Even though I had just said that, oh, I think La La Land is going to win that best uh, original screenplay, that's not... It's not like it, it, it's like the dominant favorite. I can totally see a Hell or High Water winning that category. So I think there's going to be a lot of those smaller categories that it's going to lose. And I don't see like uh, Ryan Gosling getting uh, Best Actor and whatnot. So well, we'll get to that category yeah, yeah. in a bit. So, so I, I, it's not super strong like other... You're talking about Ben-Hur, Titanic... Uh, uh, was it Return of the King? Mm -hmm. Those those were movies that were strong in almost every everything single, they every did, single yeah. category. Uh, so, quick question though: Do we have any doubt though? Does anybody at this table have any doubt that by the end of the night, the film with the most trophies are taking home is La La Land? Yeah. No oh doubt. my God. No yeah. doubt about it. Yes, yeah. absolutely. All right. Well, we're all in agreement with that. What do you think? Do you think La La Land will be the winner by the end of the night? And if so, will it get close to that record? Leave your thoughts in the comments section. All right, let's move on now. We're going to get through the next one because we've already taken up over 11 minutes of screen time. We've got a, <laughs> a lot of categories to go. The next category is Best Adapted Screenplay. I think one of the toughest things out there is writing a good adaptation. And here we go. The nominees are The Arrival, Fences, Hidden Figures, Lion, and Moonlight. You know, and for all the crap I give Arrival... <laughs> uh, this is a category that deserves to be nominated in. Mm. This is a fabulous feel. I, again, listen to that. Arrival, Fences, Hidden Figures, Lion, and Moonlight. This is a stacked field this year. Perry, let's start with you. Who will win? Who should win? 
stacked field. There is no contest in this. Moonlight is taking home that award without a doubt, and I think it deserves it. It's as much as I love La La Land, it's almost a little upsetting that we have to have a year where it's La La Land against Moonlight because there are so many categories where I think it deserves some recognition, and it's not going to get it because La La Land is just going to crush the competition. This, though, is Moonlight's award to win. I don't think anything else is a shot, and I think it deserves it. Uh, I think uh, what should win is probably Moonlight. The, the screenplay is... It's phenomenal. It's so well written. Uh, I'm going to pick a dark host, though, about who will win. I believe out of nowhere, Deadpool wins this uh, <laughs> award. No, I'm going I'm to say Moonlight. This is, a, yeah. this is a sweep for me as far as should and will. I believe they're both going to be Moonlight. What about you, Mark? Well, I would love to see Deadpool come out and accept the Academy Award <laughs> for Moonlight, Moonlight on behalf of Moonlight, <laughs> which uh, that, that wouldn't go over well. But I think what should and will win is Moonlight. That is the front runner. I think it deserves it. Personally, I would love to see Arrival come in and steal it away because it is a wonderful, wonderful screenplay and movie, one of my favorites of the year. But Moonlight, it's got this in the bag. Dennis? Yeah, definitely Moonlight. That's the one that's going to win, and I think it should win. It, it, it's weird how it's fallen under this adapted screenplay because it was teetering because they were saying that it was based on a play, but it was a play that was unproduced and unpublished, so... They were thinking maybe it could have been an original screenplay. I think they were trying to get that at first, and now it's under-adapted. I also would not fall asleep on Fences. Yeah. Don't fall asleep on Fences. I mean, I'm picking Moonlight across the board, but if Fences gets called, don't keel over in shock. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to move on now to one of my favorite categories, which is Best Visual Effects. And the nominees for Best Visual Effects are Deep Water Horizon, Doctor Strange, The Jungle Book, Rat walking through our studio. <laughs> uh, can, we, can we get that on, on, get, get that on camera? Yeah, can Grace, get, actually, let me read yeah. the final two. And let's bring this in. The next two. Uh, Kubo, the Jungle Book, Kubo and the Two Strings, and Rogue One, a Star Wars story. Let's, the Grace Great, is going to bring, bring in here. On. Yeah, just come on into camera here. <laughs> this, is, this is Grace, and uh, this is little Rat. And you see, Rat has her ball <laughs> gown on tonight. She's looking stunning for her for uh, for the party tonight. <laughs> Thank you so much, bye, Rat. <laughs> uh, Rat just all of a sudden came running uh, through the studio. <laughs> well done, Rat. <laughs> you win the Oscars. Um, <laughs> all right, so we'll start with me on this one. Tough, tough call. I mean, when you go and watch Deepwater Horizon, you forget. You're not watching a documentary in many times and in many ways. It was uh, outstanding. The vis what they did visually in Doctor Strange was crazy good. I just don't see how Jungle Book doesn't win this. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, it is staggering. Absolutely staggering. There are still people today who I'll talk to, more casual film fans, that I mentioned, by the way, did you know that entire movie was shot on a green screen in Los Angeles? And they just don't believe it. They just will not believe it. It's just staggering. Obviously, my heart is belongs to Rogue One, a Star Wars story, and Kuba and the Two Strings was breathtaking. But to me, the should and the wills both go to uh, the Jungle Book. I'll be really surprised if it doesn't. I don't know, Mark, what about you? Yeah, I'll be shocked, shocked if this doesn't win, because you said it. The whole movie is on a green screen, and that is... When you watch the Jungle Book and you think about the fact that it's shot on a green screen, it's just... It's jaw-dropping what they have done. I can't wait for Favreau to do The Lion King with this. The same technology. It's going to be amazing. Yeah, and I'm with you, John. I wish Rogue One would take it because I think, personally, I loved what they did recreating the characters that... I mean, my mother was like, oh, I had no idea Peter Cushing was still alive. I'm like, <laughs> yep, there he you go. He hasn't aged a day in <laughs> 40 <laughs> years. Hasn't, yeah, hasn't aged a day. So, I, I mean, I got to give props to that. And it is Star Wars. I wish it, it, it had a better chance. But come on, you're up against the Jungle Book. All these other uh, nominees, of course, they're great. But uh, Jungle Book's got this. Dennis, what do you think? Jungle Book is going to win, and it should win. That, that was the movie that when we saw that, First of all, that movie surprised me because I didn't think it was going to be that good. But yeah. then also the visual effects, when you're watching it, it's incredible. You're like, there's no way. Because especially with the environments that are in that film, you're like, you think they're filming on location in certain scenes. I mean, yeah. obviously, even with the animals, like obviously with the mouths moving, obviously that's fake. But from far away shots, everything looks realistic. And, and yeah, like Riley said, Lion King coming up next for Jon Favreau. He, I can't believe they're going to take that even a step further. Yeah, because that movie doesn't work. When they go to those wide, scenic shots, if you aren't gasping of the beauty and the match, if you don't buy into those shots, 
the movie doesn't work. You're pulled out of the movie and you realize, oh yeah, I'm watching a computer generated thing, but you're never in that moment, which is really crazy. I don't know, Perry, what about you? I really, you guys said it all. There's no, I don't think there's any competition in this category either. Jungle Book should win. Sh Jungle Book will win. And I'm so happy that we're in this position right now before Lion King, because Lion King is one of my favorite Disney movies ever of all time. Had we not been having this conversation about Jungle Book right now, I would have been a lot more pessimistic about the Lion King movie. So I'm so happy we're talking about this. But, you know, I'll echo what you said. I'm a Star Wars fan. I'd like to see it win an Oscar. The only thing that I wouldn't mind sneaking in, I still think the Jungle Book deserves the win, but if I turned on the TV and they announced Kubo, I, I don't know if I'd be all that disappointed. I mean, we'll get to it when we talk to animated, talk about the animated feature nominations, but you know, we, we need to start recognizing Leica for the incredible work that they're producing. And you know, I don't, I don't really think it's gonna happen here, but if it did, I wouldn't be bummed. All right, we'll move on to the next category one. This is, uh, we already had a little bit of debate around the table here about this before we started the show. Best original song. Uh, this one's going to be tight. We've got Audition, The Fools Who Dream from La La Land. We got Can't Stop the Feeling uh, from Trolls by Justin Timberlake. We've got City of Stars from La La Land, the only film to have two nominated songs this year. We have The Empty Chair uh, from Jim, the James Foley story. And we have How Far I'll Go from Moana. And um, I, I guess we're starting with you on this one. Which one will win? Which one should win? Yeah, this is tough. <laughs> this is a tough one to call because, you know, in all the research I've been doing, everybody's saying City of Stars has got this. And, I'm, and I think about that, and I think about that song. I'm not crazy about that song. I think it works in the movie. I think it works what Ryan Gosling does. He writes it. He plays it throughout. But, man, How Far I'll Go. I think that's the one that should win, and I think it will win. I think it will, because it's Moana's not going to get best animated. I think it's going to go to some, something else. We'll get there. So I think they're going to give it to Moana, because that song is so perfectly Disney. And it, we, we were listening to it on the way up, and, and, and it's so wonderful. So I want it to win. I think it should win, but it's going to squeak by, and I say it will win. Dennis, which will win? Which should win? Uh, I think, actually, City of Stars is going to win. I think La La Land just has too much <laughs> behind it. What I want to win is a Moana song, but not the Moana song that's nominated. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The, Moana, the Moana song that should win is uh, You're Welcome. You're Welcome. That yep. song is amazing, <laughs> catchy. It fits in tone with it, with the movie entirely. I think that's the song of the year, but that's you know it's not nominated, so it won't <laughs> win. What about you? Definitely City of Stars has taken this one. However, I think that Audition is the one that deserves to win the most. City of Stars is a great song. I enjoy listening it, listening to that song in the car as well. When you watch Audition in La La Land as it's playing in the movie, oh my God, what that does for her character, what that does for the movie, the way they shoot it, the actual lyrics of the song, everything about that just means so much more to me than City of Stars when it actually, I mean, it's still a great sequence, great song. I think it will it's going to win, and, you know, I don't think it's as deserving as Audition, but it's still a fantastic piece of music. And, you know, I love Moana just as much as you guys, just not as much as La La Land. <laughs> yeah, you know, the funny thing is, I, I will say that the, if I had to put money down on it, the, money, the song that's going to win is probably City of Stars, which is rather funny because it's not even the best song in its own movie. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that would go to Audition. I mean, it's, it's the, the best performed piece as well. Mm -hmm. It actually has more meaning um, to the thing. But uh, to me, it's by far the song that should win. Well, I'll go with what Dennis said initially, is You're Welcome. <laughs> but it, in You're Welcome's absence, I think it's How Far I'll Go. I have I use Google Play Music as my music streaming service, and I only have 38 songs that I've bothered to click the thumb up on. Usually I just listen to random streaming, but one of those songs is How Far I'll Go. And when she sings that line, there's a line where the sky meets the sea, and it calls me. I get choked up. <laughs> I do too, I'll man. I'll be in my car, and I'll, I'll, I'll start shaking a little bit. It's like it's so beautiful and visionary, and it's awesome. That song should win, but I do believe, uh, I agree with uh, with uh, Perry here. I do believe it's probably You know what should stars. be in here that's not, though? Anything from Sing, Sing Street? Street. <laughs> yeah. Sing Street. Yes. Yeah. I don't yes. care how many times we've said it at this point. Don't ever forget about Sing Street, please. Go watch it if you haven't. All right, the next category we're moving on to is, I believe, directing. Is that the next one we got? We're now up to the best director category, and unfortunately, I don't have the names in front of me. There they are. From uh, La La Land, we got uh, Damien Chazelle. From Hacksaw Ridge, Mel Gibson. 
from Moonlight, Barry Jenkins, from Manchester by the Sea, I always mispronounce his last name, Kenneth Longergan, and from Arrival, Denis Villeneuve, a stacked category again this year. It's crazy good. So we'll go back to you, Dennis. What should win? What will win? Uh, I think this is going to be a two-horse race between Damien Chazelle and Barry Jenkins. I think Damien Chazelle is going to win for La La Land just because of everything that's involved with La La Land between, you know, just the, the script, the cinematography, the costume design. He's in charge of all that. It's his vision that he brought to life. So I, it, because of that, I say he should win. What do you think? What will win? What should win? Stacked category, yes. These are some very talented filmmakers. Again, no competition. Damien Chazelle has this locked, and I think this is one of those categories that La La Land has locked even more so than others. I don't think anyone has a chance of taking this from him. He's got the DGA win. He's been taking up awards all over the place, too. This is done. Uh, what will win is Damien Chazelle will win for La La Land, but he should not. He should not. I, it's it's again the unpopular thing, and that's why he won't. Mel Gibson should win this award for Hacksaw Ridge. What had to be accomplished and what was accomplished in Hacksaw Ridge is a it's a nearly impossible movie to make. That's a nearly impossible movie to tell and make and make people understand it and be sucked into it. And what he accomplished in that movie to me blew my mind. So I completely agree. I think Damien Chazelle will win this award, but I honestly really wholeheartedly think that Mel Gibson probably should win it. Anyway, what about you? I echo what you say, John. I finally uh, caught up on all the Oscar movies. The last one was Hacksaw Ridge, and it blew me away. That just catapulted to top three of the year for me, and I would love to see him win. He's not going to. No, no this chance is, in hell. <laughs> no chance in hell. This is Damien's year. La La Land, look, I, I, I keep thinking of Shakespeare in Love and Saving Private Ryan, okay? Because I was looking at Barry Jenkins for Moonlight really hard, thinking maybe he could do it. Maybe he could pull that win and be the first black director to do it. I think that's a huge thing, especially with this new crop of Oscars that we have this year with all the great diversity. This would mean so much. But then you look at La La Land. La La Land's probably going to win Best Picture. We'll get there. But... It's it's got to be Damien Chazelle. I think he will win, but I I'm with you, John. I wish I think should win Mel Gibson. He killed it on this movie. Really? I I, I didn't think so. Oh. I, I watched Hacksaw Ridge, and I'm one of the f I am in the minority. I'm one of the few people that thought I liked the movie, I enjoyed it, but I thought some of the the, the directorial touches on the film were overdone, and mm. that that was Mel Gibson. I thought he did excellent work in that, and mm -hmm. he he is he is damn talented. There's no denying that. But Barry Jenkins, I, oh, he's so good. It's just if Damien Chazelle didn't win this award, I would want it to go to him, just because we were talking about the Moonlight screenplay before and. The way that's structured, it's written beautifully, but the only way something like that could work when you bring it to screen is if you have the right director behind it who can, without spoiling how the movie, what actually happens in the movie, because I think everybody should see it and experience it for themselves, obviously, just the way that that story is told, there's certain things you need to accomplish early on in order to make the ending meaningful, and I guess that sounds like a really broad way that could describe what any movie needs mm. to accomplish but Moonlight is formatted in a certain way that it needs a very particular director's touch on it. The one thing though is this like if I had to put money down right now on who will win it's going to be Chazelle for La La Land but I do not believe it is that big of a lock that a lot of people think. I think Moonlight has had a swell of momentum lately uh, culminating just in the Spirit Awards that were the other night. Barry Jenkins look if, if I were in Vegas right now and somebody came up to me and gave me four to one I'm putting money down on Barry Jenkins in four to one. I think he has an outside chance again. Again, it's that sense of momentum. Movies are not sports, but we have seen in the Oscars in years past, momentum matters. And I think Mo Moonlight's had a whole cleft of momentum behind it. And I think this is one of those categories where he could. Again, I'm calling Chazelle for the win. I do believe he will. But do not fall over in shock if Barry Jenkins' name is called because he does have a lot of the momentum behind him. All right, what do we got next? So we got cinematography or animated? We're going to animated. Mm. Best animated feature, of course, another one of my favorites each year. And this year, the animated category has some great animated films. We've got Kubo and the Two Strings. We've got Moana. We've got My Life as a Zucchini, The Red Turtle, 
and Zootopia. Perry, let's start with you. What will win? What should win? The should win part is very difficult because I would be torn between Zootopia, Moana, and Kubo. I love them all equally, but I'm a little more fascinated by what Leica does with the stop motion animation. I mean, I've said this before, but if you've never seen the Box Trolls uh, trailer that came out where they start with the behind the scenes of what it takes to actually make those characters move and then the, the piece fast forward and you just see the characters come to life as you see them in the final cut of the feature. Just knowing what goes into a production like that is insane. It's also a very a great story, beautifully told, but this is Zootopia's award to win. It's, it reminds me a lot of when we were talking about Inside Out because I love just crazy imaginative world building and what better way to describe Zootopia than that. But before everybody laughs at it, my life as a zucchini is a good watch. I highly recommend so watching that. So is the Red that. Turtle. I mean, they all are. And th they're all they're all great, but that that was one where it's just like you know they announced and everyone's like what what could that be? It's actually it's it's kind of it's a little bittersweet, but it is a sweet movie. Uh, I'm gonna go both will and should to Moana. I think Moana pulls the minor upset because I do believe Zootopia is the front runner right now. But I'm gonna I'm picking Moana for the upset. It's just one of those things where I was surprised because I thought Zootopia looked terrible when when yeah. they first started dropping the trailers. And then the second trailer in 13th came out and I was just like, oh, that's interesting. And then I watched it and I was really surprised how much I enjoyed the film. But it's not a film that I found myself naturally reaching for that screener DVD over and over again to watch again and again like I did with Moana. Uh, there was just something, there was a, a higher entertainment, for me, there was a higher entertainment value to Moana. I thought the, the music in it was fabulous. I thought the, it's weird to say cinematography, but the cinematography of Moana was, was breathtaking as well. There's a mythology behind it as well. Uh, I'm going to go Moana. What about you, Mark? Yeah, it, it, this is a tough one. Um, everybody's saying right now, and all the research I've been doing, it's Zootopia. That's the front yeah. runner for sure. But there's a feeling I have that this is Laika's year. And I wow. think, I think oh. Kubo is going to pull off the upset. I think it's Kubo and the Two Strings for the win, and I think it should win. I think it's time to... I, I think it's time to recognize Laika and what they've done over the many years. This is not easy animation, obviously. We've seen how how time-consuming it is to do this animation and then to see the product with Kubo and the Two Strings. It's a gorgeous movie. I think it's going to win. That's just a feeling. I have nothing to back it up. There's just this feeling. Everybody's talking about it. They could come in and do the, the upset. Okay, all right. This is the first time in this broadcast that we've had three different answers <laughs> mm -hmm. for will win. So we've got Zootopia will win. We've yes. got Moana will win. we got Kubo and the Two Strings. And here to tell us why the Red Turtle will win <laughs> is Dennis. So no, Dennis, what will no, no. win, what should win? Yeah, I think Zootopia is the favorite to win, but I'm actually going to go with Riley and say that Kubo and the Two Strings are going to pull off the upset. That was actually... My favorite animated uh, picture of the year, I think Zootopia was my, a close second, but I think you may see a split between the Moana and the Zootopia voters, and mm. they may go both different ways. And Kuba, I've seen a bigger push in terms of the campaign, like with at least within the industry, there's right. a bigger campaign for Kuba and the Two Strings, so they may be, the voters may get swayed that way. And I think it's a, a beautiful, brilliant film, and I hope it wins. Looking it, at these nominations, isn't it just mind blowing that there was a push for Sausage Party? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Do you know how many oh. Sausage Party award season mailers I have just like in the corner of my closet? <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm pretty happy. And I, I had fun with that too. But and it has nothing to do with the, the subject matter. It's just it wasn't as funny. It just wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't as engaging or as entertaining as these films. You know, one of the good things that's going to come out hopefully out of this is that Leica will get win or lose. Leica will get more recognition for this because unfortunately, whether you're talking about box trolls which I mm. thought was a wonderful movie. I love Box Trolls or all the other films they have done. This is a, a studio, an animation company that has not enjoyed big success. And they deserve some big success. And I really hope that the attention it's getting from the Oscars this year will draw a lot of attention to Kubo and the Two Strings one way or the other and then hopefully set up you know, that will get people going when their next film comes out, that people go, we should go and check this out because not enough people go and check out their films it's in that theaters. double-edged sword of, you know, taking risks and doing something un something unique, which they should be applauded for. It's just then when it comes to going to the box office, you can't compete with Disney. All right, we move on now. We get into the acting categories, and we're going to start off with the category of Best Actress in a Supporting Role. And the nominees this year are... Viola Davis for Fences, Naomi Harris for Moonlight, 
Nicole Kidman for Lion, Octavia Spencer for Hidden Figures, and Michelle Williams for By the Sea. Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I uh, honestly, this is the first category we've come across where I any one of these they could call any name at the end. I, I think Nicole Kidman is probably the least talked about on this list, but my God, she's so good in Lion. She's so good in Lion. Octavia Spencer. I mean, in Hidden Hidden Figures is just a treasure of a movie. There's that Viola Davis is Viola Davis. Naomi Harrison Moulin is great. Uh, okay, so I, I'm supposed to start. Um, okay. Sure, Viola Davis will win uh, Best Supporting Actress uh, for Fences. I think probably who should win might be Naomi Harris for Moonlight. Uh, so I will go Viola Davis will. I'll go with the should on Naomi Harris. Mark Riley, what about you? Yeah, I think it's it's Viola Davis. Uh, I think she's going, it, you know, you look at every prediction out there, it's Viola Davis, and rightly so. I think she's going to win it. Um, while I loved the five lines that Michelle Williams said in Manchester <laughs> by the Sea, I, I, I don't see her being even close. But uh, I, I don't I, forget about Judy Dench in, uh, that's in where Shakespeare I was going. in Love. <laughs> that's where I was going. You never know because uh, Dame Judy Dench, she came out of nowhere with three lines in one. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, this is Viola Davis should win and will win. Dennis. Uh, I think Viola Davis will win, should win. Not that Viola, she did a fantastic job. I, I think you almost, in a way, cheating, making her uh, a supporting actress as, yep. opposed, to, yeah, I agree. as opposed to co-lead in, in that film. She she did a wonderful job. If I were to pick, I, were, I would pick either between Naomi Harris or Michelle Williams. I know Riley's poking fun mm -hmm. at how little Michelle Williams <laughs> was in that film, and it's true, she's barely in it. But the scenes that she is in are, are extremely She's powerful. She's great. I go with Naomi Harris. I think what she was able to do, she shot, I think, her scenes, I think, in three days. In three days. And she was able to take the progression of where her character starts. Because, you know, on paper, it's just like, okay, yeah. drug addict. But you can see the progression from the, part, the first act to the second act to the third act. They're all different performances. And if you don't know that she was like in in James Bond you don't know she's an English actress you would never guess at all from her her accent I would totally completely buy her so that's my pick what about you for the the whole supporting versus lead argument I would say Naomi Harris should win the award that's the perfect example of someone who has you know not all that much screen time and her performance in that movie reverberates through every single thing that happens in it she is so good this is another one of those categories I'll repeat what I said during the director category stacked category excellent actresses and excellent performances all around there is no contest Viola Davis is walking away with that award tonight and this category, above all others, if it doesn't go that way, I will be shocked. Okay, I, I mean, I won't be. It's like, wow, th this category is so good. All right, let's now move on to the gentleman in Best Actor in a Supporting Role. And the nominees this year are Marshal Ali in Moonlight, Jeff Bridges in Hell or High Water, Lucas Hedges in Manchester by the Sea, Dev Patel in Lion, and Michael Shannon for Nocturnal Animals. Mark mm. Riley, we start with you. Who will win? Who should win? Oh, I wish that Jeff Bridges would win for this. <laughs> I loved him in Hell or High Water. He is phenomenal in this. He's not going to win. I, he's, he doesn't have a chance. It's going to go to Mah uh, uh, Mahershala. Is that how you pronounce it? Mahershala Ali. He's fantastic in the movie. I... I, I I'm looking at all the research again. Everybody is pointing to him, and I think he deserves it, so I think he should win and will win. Interesting note, he was nominated last night in the Spirit Awards uh, for the same award. Did not win. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Did not win at the Spirit Awards. Something to keep in mind for that. Mm -hmm. Dennis, what about you? Yeah, I think uh, Mahira Shala Ali should win. <laughs> uh, he's, had, he's had a fantastic year. He, had, uh, he was in Luke Cage. He was in right. Hidden Figures. He was great in Luke Cage. Yeah, and he was in Hidden Figures, yep. and then he was in, in in Moonlight. And I think he did a wonderful job. I think there is an outside chance of Jeff Bridges winning just because of his name and his reputation. So I wouldn't be surprised if Jeff Bridges win, but I think Ali's going to take it. What about you? I'm just so nervous to say his name wrong. I know how to say his <laughs> name. It's just for some reason, like, naturally my mouth wants to add more laws on it. So but you can create a whole new name. Because you have La La Land stuck Maybe. in your head. Mahershala. Mahershala. 
Mahershala. I said it. Okay. There you go. He's he's going to win. He's mm-hmm. great in in the movie. I think he deserves it. But wow, would I like to see Jeff Bridges take this? Or speaking of Spirit Awards. I wish Ben Foster was nominated in this category. Perhaps that's not the thing to be talking about now because he's not in play, but I wouldn't have minded seeing Ben Foster walk away with this award or I, Michael Shannon is great in Nocturnal Animals. I am really surprised that Aaron Taylor Johnson didn't get that nomination. And if he was in this category, I might be rooting for him also. But you know, now that I've named pretty much everybody, I don't want to knock Lucas Hedges or Dev Patel either because both of them are great well, as Dev well. Dev Patel was almost like a lead actor, though. I mean, this is one of those, like the Viola Davis thing, where they put him into support. Right. Mm-hmm. But he's there. Yeah. So so he's in there. I do really think it is interesting to know. We brought it up, but Foster beat Ali. Mm-hmm. At, at the Spirit Awards, and Foster is not nominated in this category, and yet Ali is, which is interesting. I'm going to go dark horse on this, Dev Patel. Oh, mm. wow. I'm going to go total dark horse on this. I'm going to pick Dev Patel. My bracket was busted a long time really ago. You are getting really risky with that. Uh, but yeah. I'm going to go Dev Patel for Lion. He's not just the dude from who, uh, I was going to say, who wants to be a millionaire. Uh, yeah, some dog some millionaire. millionaire. Um, or as, what did they call it in Saturday Night Live? Who Wants to Eat, I believe is what they call the Saturday Night Live sketch. He's not just that kid anymore. This dude is awesome. I'm going to pick him. I'm, I'm going to go lean towards you, Mark. Uh, I honestly think Jeff Bridges should win this. Really? I mean, there's a I little bit. I thought Ben Foster should have been in there instead well, of Jeff yeah, Bridges. Hey, look, I'm not going to well, disagree, but since he's not on okay. the list um, and, and Jeff Bridges is, I think there's a little bit of taking Jeff Bridges for granted. We see him, we just expect it's going to be mind blowingly, his performance at any rate will be mind blowingly good. Of course it will be, but it was. And in a movie that was really bleak and stark and beautiful in it, it was Bridges who brought moments of levity and a little bit more of a human factor to it as well. Uh, he, you know what? I compare Jeff Bridges' performance in Hell or High Water to Andrew Garfield's in The Social Network. Like, to me, I always believe Andrew Garfield is what gave the humanity and the heart to The Social Network uh, in a movie that is otherwise populated by caricatures. Some, and that can be a good thing. Um, but, and I thought Jeff Bridges was a guy who just brought more dimensions to this movie. I wish he would, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go Dev Patel. All right, we move on to the next category, which is, of course, Best Actress in a Leading Role. And we've got Spirit Award winner last night, uh, Isabel Huppert for L. Is it Huppert or is it Herbert? Huppert. It is Huppert. Huppert. Okay. For L. We got Ruth Nega, uh, no Josh McCuga. It is not uh, Ruth Nega's Rutabagas. Um, uh, Ruth Nega for Loving. Natalie Portman for Jackie. Emma Stone for La La Land, and Meryl Streep for Florence Foster Jenkins. Dennis, we start with you on this one. Who will win? Who should win? Emma Stone's going to win this one, I think. I think she's the the front runner. Uh, It's tough to say. It's a great category. I mean, even like Natalie Portman, I think, was getting a little buzz in the beginning when when Jackie first came out, but then La La Land kind of stole all the momentum. I'd say Emma Stone. For, for for will and should. Yeah. What about you, Perry? I, I think I know which way you're going on this. <laughs> oh, no, I'm going to surprise you. Really? You're going to surprise me? All right. Absolutely not. I'm going to say Emma Stone. <laughs> <laughs> I, want Emma Sto- it, I want Emma Stone to win, and I think she is going to win. But I, I've been hearing a lot of chatter now about Isabel Huppert actually stealing it from her. I don't think that is in the realm of possibility whatsoever. And even though I think she's good in L, but I don't. I think that I didn't like Elle as a whole so much that it kind of took away some of her shine in that movie, and I'm wishing that um, Amy Adams had snuck into that spot now instead of her, but, you know, it is what it is, and Emma Stone's going to win it anyway. Um, Emma Stone's going to win this. She's going to win this. But this is another one of those situations where if you gave me four to one on Isabel Huppert, again, momentum. I'm hearing a lot of people talking about her in this. It, I, do, don't fall over shock. For should, I'm also going to say Emma Stone. This was the performance of her career. And I'll say this right now. If Emma Stone does not win Best Actress for this movie, she will never win Best <laughs> Actress for the rest of her career. Because she was... Look, I think La La Land is a tiny bit overrated. I liked it very much. I'm glad it's nominated for Best, for best Movie of the Year. It was in my top ten Best Films of the Year. It's great. But Emma Stone was flat out flawless in this movie, absolutely flawless. There's that one scene, I remember it was early in the movie, and I already thought, give her the best actress. It's that scene where she's auditioning. Yeah. So yeah. she's she is an actress, Emma Stone, playing an actress, auditioning for different parts, and I'm like, 
this is like this is clinic. This, mm -hmm. She's putting on a clinic right now. I was floored by her in this movie. And then there's the singing and dancing on top of it. But the singing and dancing mean nothing if there's not an absolutely concrete, solid performance under it. And look, Ruth Nega, I love. Because when I saw Ruth Nega in Loving, which I did see before uh, La La Land, I thought, oh, well, just give her mm -hmm. the Academy Award. Uh, and then I saw Emma Stone in this. So uh, the, full marks to everybody. And I was very late to watching Florence Foster Jenkins. Not a great movie. Mm. I will be one of those people to stand up and say, yeah, Meryl Streep deserved to be nominated because, oh my God, she's so good in it. She almost makes a bad movie watchable. Oh. Um, and and it, look, it's a great category, but I, I believe it's going to be and should be Emma Stone. Yeah, this is a, this is a stacked one as, as well. Uh, I remember watching Jackie and saying, Natalie Portman just locked in the win. I thought that was it. Yeah, she yeah. cuz that's an unremarkable movie that relies on her performance. It's I think she was phenomenal. And then I saw La La Land. <laughs> you know, and and everything you guys are saying Emma Stone is so brilliant in this movie. She should win, she will win, and at least Ruth Nega has her rutabaga stand that she can <laughs> fall back on. Thank Josh you. Josh McCuga will be uh, yeah. funding himself. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> now we started with you on this one, right, Dennis? Which one? With uh, act, actor or actress in a leading yes, role? Yes, yeah. Okay, so now we move on to best actor in a leading role. Uh, it's weird reading off a, a category like this when neither Tom Hanks uh, nor Leonardo DiCaprio mm -hmm. are, or, are up or in. But we've got Casey Affleck for Manchester by the Sea, who once again won at the uh, Spirit Awards last night. Andrew Garfield for Hacksaw Ridge. Ryan Gosling for La La Land. Viggo Mortensen for Captain Fantastic, and Denzel Washington for Fences. Perry, we start with you. I have a feeling this will be the one category yeah. that La La Land is in that you will not pick. No, I won't. And, you know, I, I kind of don't think Ryan Gosling would even deserve it over some of these other, other options. But this is the category that is stressing me out the most with my pool because... I've had a document on my laptop for like two months where I'm just, I keep filling in and changing who I'm going to pick to win everything for my pool. And it's been Casey Affleck mm. up until the SAG Awards. And every day that we've crept close to the Oscars, I have been siding more and more with Denzel Washington. And it's, it's a lock now. That, that is who is on my ballot. That is who I'm going to go with. And I, I think he deserves it. I think Fences... I didn't love Fences all that much besides the performances. I feel like that that is a movie with exceptional performances. And that, it's a good movie. I'm not saying everything else in it is trash. But that is a piece of material that is elevated to such an extreme because of the two lead slash supporting whatever performances in that movie. So I really do think he deserves it. But if you haven't seen Captain Fantastic, Viggo Mortensen is so good in that movie. And that is such a great film that I, I feel like no one's seen largely because of the title. Half the people that I've mentioned it to casually that do not work in this industry, they're like, oh, is that another superhero movie? <laughs> no. It sounds like a superhero no. spoof movie. Is it's what yeah. it like. such a unique family comedy slash drama. And it's so touching and moving and unique. Go see that one. Yeah, I, I'm going to stick with the favorite on this one right now, even though the, notwithstanding the sags, I think K Casey Affleck probably wins this. He brought, this is one of those situations, again, remarkable performance in a movie that I don't even think was great. I think Manchester by the Sea was good. I don't think it was great. I don't think it deserved to be nominated for Best Picture. That's just my, my personal opinion. But Casey Affleck, what he did in that movie, the performances in that movie as a whole were staggering. I think he will win. I'm going to say Viggo Mortensen should win. Uh, I don't think he will. What I was very late to, to the party on Captain Fantastic, but what Viggo Mortensen does in that movie is crazy, and it's hard material. Th that, so is what Casey Affleck had to deal with in Manchester by the Sea. That was tough, emotional material. So was what Viggo Mortensen had to do. I can't say enough about Andrew Garfield. He could have been nominated for this or Silence, another movie that wasn't so great, but he could have been nominated for that as well. And Denzel Washington. Look, don't fall asleep on Denzel Washington winning. Uh, don't fall asleep on Andrew Garfield winning. But I really do think it's probably going to be Casey Affleck. What about you, Mark? Yeah, th this is tough. Uh, t t kind of, I'm going back between what you two said, Perry and John. I, I thought Casey Affleck was phenomenal in this movie. And didn't like the movie that much. Uh, I thought it was good, I, but I, I thought it was really reliant on his performance, and so he should be here. And a few days ago, he's got this locked, and then the SAG Awards happened, and, and I'm, I'm hearing this clamoring for Denzel Washington. So 
My prediction is that he will win. I think Denzel Washington is going to win, um, and that Casey Affleck should, and I think he probably will. I don't know. It's really tough. You can see me going back and forth. I don't know when I'm going to lock in yet. I'm going to say that Denzel will win and should win. Man, Andrew Garfield was great. What do you think, Das? Uh, I think Denzel Washington is going to win. I think Casey Affleck should win, though I'm not taking anything away from Denzel Washington's performance. I think he was utterly fantastic. I think with Casey Affleck, I think there are certain scenes that he just kind of kills in, in Manchester by the Sea that elevate the film as a whole, where where uh, Denzel Washington, as his performance, you know, it was great, but it was, it was consistent throughout uh, Fences. But I think... Momentum is on Denzel's side. All right, and that brings us to the granddaddy of them all, the one that everybody's going to be waiting for, and that is the Academy Award for Best Picture. And the nominees this year are Arrival, Fences, Hacksaw Ridge, Hell or High Water, Hidden Figures, La La Land, Lion, Manchester by the Sea, and Moonlight. And I guess, Perry, you let us off last time, so I guess this one is on me. What is going to win? It's about momentum. I'm going to call Moonlight. Mm. I'm going to call Moonlight for the win. I think it's going to shock a lot of people, but I think a lot of people are seeing this coming. Uh, again, it's, it's all about momentum when you just look at that film and what it is in its totality. It is breathtaking. However, it's not my should win. My should win, if you're watching earlier, you know what my should win is. Hacksaw Ridge should win this category. I think what it was able to accomplish was almost unaccomplishable. Uh, and what they did with that movie is just staggering. But I believe Moonlight will win. It is a worthy recipient. Uh, but then again, I wouldn't put any money down on it because it's, I think we all agree, it's coming down to La La Land and Moonlight, right? And I think the rest of you are probably going to say La La Land. But I mean, Moonlight is, is definitely the other big contender there. But I don't know, Mark, what about you? What will win? What should win? Well, I think I'm going to go with a dark horse here. I think Deadpool has got <laughs> this. <laughs> Wait, hold on. One, two, three, four. Oh, it didn't make it. Okay. Yeah. What will win is La La Land. I think it's just, it's too hard to ignore. I think La La Land is the favorite. Uh, it's going to win. What should win? Moonlight. I think Moonlight should win because um, I do see those two, but I think there's just too much going against Moonlight. I think, you know, it, 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 Hollywood loves movies about itself. Mm -hmm. And I think this is so well done, so fun. It, it, it's, it's a movie that kind of makes you smile. We need that a lot, and I think the Academy knows that, and I think they want La La Land to win. I think it will win, but I agree with you, John. I think should Moonlight. Dennis? Uh, I think La La Land will win. I think Moonlight has a outside chance of upsetting it. What should win, I think, is Hell or High Water. That was my favorite. So movie. good. <laughs> favorite so movie good. of the year, but just I don't think there's enough buzz. People haven't really, not everyone has seen it. And, and with La La Land, I think, yes, we talked about it kind of maybe not getting uh, tying or breaking the record. I think some of the small characters, they won't win, but I think collectively everyone will vote for the La La, for La, La Land. And I also... There's you know this backlash against it or whatever. There should be some sort of backlash against the backlash because I'm sick and tired of people going. Oh, well, it's another movie about uh, Hollywood talking about Hollywood. So what? There's so many movies about so many different things. How many comic book movies are there yeah. every mm -hmm. year? There's so many movies about this or that. There's like one movie that ha is about Hollywood, and now people are complaining. So I I, I don't pay attention. To it doesn't movie. So, the, it doesn't matter if the movie's about a goldfish. Yeah, it's <laughs> about it's how good. good. Yeah, it's yeah. all about how good the movie is. Perry, in the uh, in the least <laughs> suspenseful, least yeah. shocking prediction of the it's evening. Smart Perry. move to save the most obvious one for last. My number one movie of 2016 was La La Land. I want it to win. It will win. I think if there is any sort of surprise situation here, it's probably going to be Moonlight. Or I've actually heard a lot of people thinking that because Hidden Figures turned out to be such a monumental success, that that could wind up taking it. But... I, the odds of either of those taking it over La La Land, I think, are extremely slim. La La Land has it. All right, so listen, guys, we need to know what do you think are going to win these awards. But don't just jump in and say what you think will. Tell us what you think will win in the comment section. And then number two, put the number two, what do you think should win in these categories? There's a lot of things. You know, one of the interesting things is I remember earlier in the year, we were getting into June and July, and a number of the blockbusters of the year had come out. And a number of the blockbusters this year, didn't do as well as people, or weren't as good as people had hoped. And there was early chatter online about how, man, it's 2016, the biggest disappointment year. 
But that was only halfway through because now here we are. And we got movies like Fences, Hacksaw Ridge, Hell or High Water, Hidden Figures, La La Land. La, I mean, we got it, it just turned out to be an amazing mm -hmm. year for film. Uh, and it, it probably will end up uh, being capped off with La La Land being, um, being, being given the best thing. I'm still picking Moonlight, though. I think it's got all the momentum behind it. But this actually ended up being one hell of a year for film. And we have been very privileged to talk about it all through the year. Well, that will wrap up our pre-show, guys. I want to remind you once again, at about 5, we believe it's 5.30 Pacific Standard Time, we are, yep, I'm getting a thumbs up from Thad. We are going to be starting our live stream that will be streaming live all throughout the Oscars. Now, we're not going to be on camera all throughout the Oscars. What's going to be happening is that the stream will be going, and when there's a commercial break, we will be jumping on camera to talk about the previous segment. We're going to do that all through the night. And then make sure you come back and join us after the Oscars are done, because we're going to be having our Ask Oscar wrap-up show. And also, make sure you're following Collider Video on Instagram, because we're going to be posting pictures and thoughts throughout the night. Make sure you're following everybody on Twitter as well for our tweets and live reactions as we go. And make sure you keep that laptop beside you open on our Collider Video YouTube channel to watch for the live stream throughout the show as well. I want to thank everybody who's joining me here. First of all, sitting over there, Dennis Zen. Where can people follow you on Twitter tonight? Uh, you guys can follow me at Think Here on Instagram, Dennis.TZNG. And yeah, I'll be here on the our, our live show and our post show. Perry Nemiroff, where can people follow you tonight? I am on Twitter and Instagram at P Nemiroff. If you want to kill some time before the live stream comes on, there is an Oscar an, an, an <laughs> Oscar themed behind the scenes episode up right now. It is a lot of fun. Happy Oscars, guys. Happy birthday to this one yeah, right happy here. Happy birthday, John. Yeah, yeah. Just, <laughs> that's right. My, my birthday to celebrate just happens tonight. to be on the Oscars uh, today. So I think my wife is bringing a cake. Uh, nice. Mark Riley, <laughs> where can people uh, follow you tonight? You can find me eating that cake when it gets here. <laughs> and at Riley Around on Twitter and Instagram. All my reactions will be up there. I can't wait for this Oscars. It could be a good one. And you guys can follow me on Facebook and on Twitter. Simply at John Campy. Again, make sure you're following us on Instagram, a Collider video uh, for the pictures and uh, a little short videos and all the mayhem that's going to be going on around the Collider Studios tonight as we celebrate the Oscars, as you celebrate the Oscars. Thanks for joining us, guys. We'll be with you all night. So until then, bye-bye. Hey, guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.